after I made my video exploring a Doc 2 What If, that being the alternate version of Series 8 starring the 11th Doctor, a lot of you wanted to see a video detailing a similar What If for the 9th Doctor. What if the 9th Doctor did Series 2? Christopher Eccleston famously left the 2000s revival of Doctor Who after just one series, the news coming out after just the first episode had aired. For new and old fans alike, we fell in love with this incarnation of the Doctor, knowing it was going to be short-lived. Knowing that he would regenerate and we would have to acclimatise to somebody new. Now I don't want to go into the politics of why Eccleston left. Sack Russell T Davis, sack Jane Tranter, sack Phil Collinson, sack Julie Gardner and I'll come back. There's plenty of information already out there and I'm sure if you're a Who fan, you know most of it anyway. I also don't want to go into it because plainly, it proves there would never ever be a Series 2 with the Ninth Doctor back in the 2000s. It simply would never have happened given the circumstances, whereas the scenario of Matt Smith doing Series 8 was something that came very close to fruition. This is purely a what if video from the standpoint of the Hooniverse, the narrative of the Ninth Doctor, not the behind the scenes troubles. There's more where that came from. So if anybody's gonna shut up, it's you! It'll probably disappoint you to know that I don't really ache for this what-if scenario like I did the previous one. I think that's because of two key reasons. The first is that the Ninth and Tenth Doctors have a really cohesive arc, and one that makes the most sense, including the regeneration. I subscribe to the Stephen Moffat outlook on regeneration, that the Doctor is the same person with different faces, and ironically, this outlook was championed by RTD in those first few seasons. There isn't really a 9th Doctor storyline and then a 10th Doctor storyline, there is really just one complete line from A to B. The Doctor is a Time War veteran, struggling to come to terms with the PTSD he's left with, the survivor's guilt, the fact that the Daleks have soldiered on where his people have perished. He meets Rose and she is able to give him someone to talk to, a friend, a companion, someone to stave off the loneliness of wandering the universe with all of that baggage. Later, the Doctor and Rose discover romantic chemistry between them, and it is then by happenstance that the Time Lord is forced to regenerate. And I'm not going to see you again. He subconsciously picks a face that he thinks will make him more appealing, a more classically handsome visage with a more suave and cool costume to match. The love story between Rose and the Doctor, along with the continued echoes of the Time War, go on to form the backbone of the Time Lord story across the entire RTD run, right up to the final moments. I bet you're gonna have a really great year. Yeah? You can ponder a what if scenario for Nine in series two, but I think it would largely stay the same in terms of the stories and the arcs. However, I think it all worked out perfectly with the transition to the 10th Doctor, as it allowed the Doctor and Rose's dynamic to flourish and gave him a new lease on life. It feels right that the character regenerated when he did, to be honest. The other reason is simply, for me, could it have gone better for the Ninth Doctor other than Series 1? Series 1 is basically a perfect season of Doctor Who. It features some of the best episodes of all time. I'm my mommy. It serves as the perfect introduction or reintroduction to the character and the conventions of the show, and it all leads towards an emotionally charged, action-packed finale with the Doctor's greatest foes. BBC scheduling, I mean the Daleks. You have excellent standalone episodes like The End of the World, Dalek, Father's Day. You have epic two-parters in The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances, and of course the aforementioned finale. You have a perfect TARDIS team in Nine, Rose, and Captain Jack. Even the lesser episodes of this season are still decent, like the Slovene two-parter or the long game. Even Boomtown has its charms. <laughs> That's better. In the Matt Smith scenario, yeah, he got a series on par with Eccleston's in Series 5, but he also got follow-up seasons that in essence watered down that initial perfect run. You can't look at Series 5 and divorce it from Series 7, from what happened to the Ponds, the Silence Arc, the Crack in Time, and all the unnecessary changes to Eleven, like the Flanderization and the costuming, to the TARDIS interior. By the time he was announced as leaving the show, it felt like there was a huge opportunity missed to redeem his run. Series 8 was unburdened by Moffat's 50th anniversary pressures, or the split scheduling, and it ended up being a real return to form in my opinion. Of course, that was helped by having a brand new Doctor and a more fleshed out dynamic with Clara, but I still think we would have had a victory lap for Eleven had Smith stayed. It can't help but feel so bittersweet that he left when he did, even if it meant we got the majesty of the 12th Doctor. 
I think the idea of seeing Nine in those subsequent RTD stories provides us with some fun imagery no doubt, it would have been cool to hear his northern tones taking on the Cybermen, I could have so seen him facing off against Sim, I actually think their dynamic would have been closer to Capaldi and Sim than Tennant and Sim, I could so see him ranting in the telly box from Blink, and it would have been potentially fun to see him travel with Martha and Donna just for the novelty. But that's the thing for me, it all just feels like a fun what if photoshop scenario, not something I really need in terms of how the story played out and how the overarching character of the Doctor progressed. To be honest, the 11th Doctor series 8 tier what if that will forever irk me with 9 is a completely different what if altogether and one I've covered a little in my 50th anniversary video already. What if the 9th Doctor did the day of the Doctor? With RTD at the helm of series 1-4 to four, and RTD back for the 60th anniversary and beyond, there was and will be no chance of Chris returning to Doctor Who. But Stephen Moffat's show running with different producers, that's a completely different kettle of fish. Back in 2013, the creative wedge between Eccleston and the show was not present, this was the perfect chance for him to come back. It was seemingly the perfect conditions off screen, but also the perfect conditions on screen. The entire storyline for Day is all about the pre-Series 1 9th Doctor. This is his Christmas Carol style look into the future, a chance for him to make a life altering decision, one that we knew in 2005 as his history. Through the 9th Doctor's adventure into the future with the moment, he meets the man who regrets and the man who forgets. The then pillars of New Who all standing together. Of course, Eccleston declined. He felt that the scripts didn't do justice to the Ninth Doctor. I struggle with that because I think it absolutely does do justice to the character, but perhaps Eccleston was not a fan of the idea that Gallifrey's destruction would be averted. He also said he was still waiting on an apology from the BBC, so in spite of RTD not being involved, it seems there were still reparations to be had. And that is fair enough. Moffat has since said in an interview with the Radio Times that I knew that Chris was almost certainly going to say no. I met him a couple of times and he was absolutely lovely. He met with me because he didn't want to say no through his agent or a phone call or email. He wanted to do it personally. And I three quarters talked him into it. So I started a version of it, but I got to a point where I could go no further unless it was going to be him. I went for another meeting with him and he decided no. His reasons are his business and he's a very private man, but it's reasonable to say he really cares about Doctor Who. He's well versed in what happened since he left and happily chatted away about Amy Pond by name. Amazingly, you can actually read some excerpts from the Ninth Doctor version of Day as Moffat released it for a charity drive a few years ago. It provides an amazing window into what never ended up happening. Reddit user The Black Knight Rises spoke to storyboard artist Andrew Wildman, who worked on some boards for the Ninth Doctor in Day. These drawings are fascinating as they really help us to visualise what it might have looked like to see the Ninth Doctor in place of the War Doctor, talking to the moment in the barn and preparing to jump into a portal to the future. The late great John Hurt was brought in to play a Ninth Doctor proxy in the War Doctor. The portrayal was fantastic absolutely fantastic, but it is so obvious that this role was written for the Ninth Doctor. I don't admit to all of them, there's one life I've tried very hard to forget. It doesn't really make sense that this mystery incarnation exists and that the Doctor says he has tried to forget him, like he ever tried to hide that he destroyed Gallifrey and the Time Lords in the first place. Oh, your race is dead! You all burn, all of you! Fear me, I've killed hundreds of Time Lords. Fear me. I've killed all of them. White Town in one second. Goodbye! I watched it happen. I made it happen! It's so obvious the whole deal with making it a secret is to mask the fact that this Doctor has been pulled out of nowhere. It's screwed with the numbering, and still to this day you get Whovians pointing out that actually, insert numbered Doctor is actually this numbered Doctor. <laughs> what would we do without pedantic Doctor Who fans? Almost 11 years on, I still like to imagine the what if when Nine was the protagonist of the 50th, meeting 1011 and finally getting that extra texture to his first series. To me, this was the moment, no pun intended, for Eccleston to return, to flesh out his original run, to put a full stop to what he brought to the character. I think even post RTD2, it would be hard to find the appropriate time to see this incarnation, he's so tied to the post time war events and Rose that it would be strange to pluck him out of time like the 10th Doctor and give us a random adventure. The Guardians of the Edge 
were the best idea Chris Chibnall ever brought to Doctor Who. A cool way of bringing back older Doctors without the complications of time travel or having to explain their aged faces. I would love to see the Ninth Doctor appear in this capacity to help whichever Doctor would visit him in his hypothetical regeneration story. If I was speaking purely from the fanboy side of things, I would love to have seen the Ninth and Eleventh Doctors team up and potentially face the Master. Weirdly, in a previous Doctor Who video somewhere, I can't remember which one, I had said that I'd have loved to see Eccleston come back as a face for the Master, which is something Matt Smith actually ended up saying. I've always thought if I came back, I'd like to come back as the Master. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Great Matts think alike, I guess. It makes so much sense for the Master to co-opt a face with the Doctor and use it to cause chaos across the universe and frame him. It would also be a great way of tricking the audience. You think the old Doctor is back, but no, it's actually the Master. What a cool twist that would be. There's still time in the future to make that happen, and while Smith doing it would be cool, I think it would be even more awesome to have Nine's face be used here. Maybe the Eleventh Doctor could actually face the Master with Nine's face, and then we kill two birds, with one stone, one Eccle stone. I'm sorry. But yeah, the 11th Doctor would actually then face a master, finally. Coward. Any day. If Christopher Eccleston does ever come back to Doctor Who, it would be amazing, but I also don't need it to happen. He had an incredible run. His run was the perfect catalyst for the story of one of the greatest Doctors and Doctor Who eras ever. And there is a really great coda to his time on the show in what John Hurt brought to the War Doctor in the 50th anniversary. But it still stands as a fascinating what if. Let me know in the comments what other Doctor Who ifs you'd like me to cover. I think the biggest one in my mind is what if Tenants did Series 5, because like the Smith scenario, it came really close to happening. It doesn't have to involve a Doctor, it could be companion related, villain related, arc related, but do let me know, because I'd love to discuss it, and if there's a what if as juicy as this one, I'll probably do a video on it. If you like the Doctor Who content here on this channel and you want to see it continue, then please consider signing up for a Patreon membership. You'll get loads of exclusive goodies, including a weekly podcast. We're currently going through X-Men 97 and it is awesome. I expect to cover each Doctor Who episode in more detail on that same podcast when it releases in May. Uh, but I also want to do some like big Doctor Who videos this year, Doctor Who videos on Series 5 and beyond. So yeah, if you want to see any of that, please consider joining up. You can join it as little as a dollar, or you can join one of the tiers. It doesn't matter to me. I appreciate it either way. Uh, you're helping keeping the lights look full fat, and it's really awesome of you. Of course, a big full fat tier patron thank you to Dr. Chike and TDW Fan. I have a feeling that that means the Doctor Who fan, but I'll have to find out from you, TDW.